I slang cast episode one of After the Hype. We're going to talk about the iPhone SE. Final thoughts. Is it still worth it? After all the hype is said and done, it's been out for a little while now. People have been using this phone. I have the iPhone SE right here, the black colorway. Is it still worth it today? We're going to talk about it. Or are there better options? So welcome to Slangcast. I'm Jeff. You can find me on Digital Slang over on my main channel on YouTube. Check it out for the latest unboxings and reviews on all things tech. Friday night streams here on Slangcast. And this Friday night, guys, stay tuned. We got a big stream coming up. We got a John Madden challenge, Madden 2020, winner of the game. We will be streaming it. Winner of the game will get a pair of headphones, and somebody in the stream will also be receiving a pair of headphones. So stay tuned to that. You do have to stay with us for the entire stream to be eligible to win the headphones. So Friday night starts at 9 p.m. Eastern here on Slangcast this Friday. Check it out, guys. But today, after the hype, episode one, the iPhone SE. Again, it's been out for a little while now. Let's talk about it. Final thoughts, what Apple did well, and some of the problems that are now here with the iPhone SE. Let's talk about it. It's been out now for a little while. Apple did some really good things here, right? Price point, 400 bucks. Internals on the phone, same internals as the 11 Pro Max, the 11 Pro, A13 chip. It's a beast of a chip beast of a processor and it will be relevant and great for years we all know apple does at least five years of updates on their software so this phone is going to get updates for years to come let's talk about what they did bad though right build build quality on here is good right it feels premium but very small form factor old build design same as the iphone 8 iPhone 7, 6S, 6. The only difference is this back logo. The Apple logo is now in the middle instead of on top here, a little higher up, closer to the camera, like the 8 Plus here. Now, saying all that, 400 bucks for this phone is a good price, right? Starting price point, it gets people into the mid-range market. If you've always wanted to get an iPhone, but you just couldn't afford one, well, now you can. And the iPhone SE, again, will be relevant for years to come, but your form factor, it's an old design. Still really good build quality, right? Glass design, aluminum, good quality as far as build goes, but old style, old format, outdated, definitely outdated. And it looks outdated when you are using it or when you're holding it. You can tell the big forehead, the big chin, definitely outdated. And the problem with this is it's not what Apple didn't give us. It's what other phones and other companies did give us right in the mid-range market the pixel 4a that phone is blowing up fantastic phone for 350 bucks that kind of made you think like well the iphone se great internals but it looks like an old phone the 4a it's even cheaper than the base model iphone se second gen it looks like a newer phone matte black only one colorway on the 4a but still one of the best cameras in the game. Plastic build, yep, yeah, design, plastic build. But saying that, it feels good in the hand. The matte black looks super smooth. Looks great. No problems there. It doesn't feel cheap when you hold it, even though it's a plastic phone. Now, the iPhone SE does feel premium when you hold it. But from the front, you do have the huge forehead and the huge chin. So... It might be a problem for some people. Good phone, good camera. But here's the problem with the iPhone SE. And one of the main problems with this phone is battery life. I want my phone to last all day long. It's that simple. I want to be able to use it. I want to be able to plug it in at night when I go to sleep. I want to wake up, take it off that charger. And I don't want to think about it again until that night when I'm about to lay down. Then I'll plug it in again. That's it. That's all I'm asking for. Just get me through a day. The iPhone SE, especially if you're a heavy user, does not do that. So I have a problem with that. Even though, even though it's a mid-range phone, I'm only paying 400 bucks for it, I can't cut that corner. That's a deal breaker for me. Bad battery life is a deal breaker. A lot of good about this phone. Internals, fantastic. Some of the best out there on the market. Camera is decent. It's pretty good for what it is. Build quality 
is good. Format, not so good. Design, not so good. Old design. The design is good for years ago, not today. Not compared to the Pixel 4a, the Galaxy A71. I could pick up a 4G model of the A71, which basically looks like the front of the Note 20 or Note 10 for the 4G variant, 400 bucks, to 5G variant, around 500, 600 bucks. So the problem with the iPhone SE is not what Apple didn't give us. It's what other phone companies did give us. The Pixel 4a, the Galaxy A71, LG, the Velvet that came out, right? But it's a little more expensive, so we're going up into the $600, $700 price range at that point. But if you are set on Apple and the ecosystem, are there better options even within Apple? at that price point. And there are. I think there are. The iPhone 8 Plus. This dropped when the iPhone 10 came out. So two years earlier than the iPhone SE, A11 Bionic, still because of Apple's five-year software updates, we still have about three years of software updates on the 8 Plus. So keep that in mind. Bigger form factor, right? 5.5 inches. Same design, just a bigger one. But still really good, relevant, good camera, really good camera on there, just as good as the iPhone SE, basically, for the most part. So I can get that for 250 bucks with more storage today in 2020, end of the year. 8 Plus, product red, 256 gigs of storage, 250 to 300 bucks all day long, mint condition. So keep that in mind. Is that a better option than the 64 gigabyte iPhone SE, smaller form factor, Less storage, better internals, a couple more years of software updates. But let's be real. If I still have three years of updates on my phone for the 8 Plus, okay, in three years, I'm sure I'm going to want a new phone anyway. How many of us actually hold on to our phone for three years at this point? What else can I get in the Apple ecosystem for 400 bucks? Because once you go past the $400 price range of the SE, if you go up in storage, it starts to become less and less worth it. I think the 128 gigabyte model is another 50 bucks, which isn't bad. That might be the sweet spot. But once you go to the 256 gigabyte version, that's another 150. So it's for me, that's not worth it. Not at all. 550 for basically an iPhone 8 with better storage. Uh, there's better options out there. So... What else is out there? The iPhone 10 came out the same year as the 8 Plus. I can get an iPhone 10 if you want that newer look, the newer design, an iPhone 10 I can get for 350 bucks all day long. The iPhone 10s, 450 around there, 10s Max if you want to spend a little more, 550. iPhone 10R. I can get an iPhone 10R for 350 all day long. Looks more like the newer models. The specs are actually newer in the 10R than the iPhone 8 Plus. So you're going to get another year of software updates. Bigger form factor than the iPhone SE second gen. A lot more screen real estate. A lot better battery life. 10R has some of the best battery life on an iPhone, period. So you have to just consider your options. Don't always say or tell yourself, I need the newest iPhone I need it to be new because you don't. There are great options in the used market. And if you're not stuck in the Apple ecosystem, the Pixel 4a for 350 is a fantastic phone right now. The Galaxy A71 from the front, it looks just like the Note 20 and the Note 10 Plus. Mid-range specs, plastic design, still a great phone because of the price. See, the problem with the Note 20 that just came out is price. Not the, not the Note 20 Ultra, still a little high though, very high, very premium phone, but the regular Note 20, the $1,000 Note 20, it's catching a lot of heat because of the price, 1000 bucks, plastic phone. The sweet spot for that phone is around 700 bucks. That phone will do really well at 700 At 1000 the only people buying that phone are reviewers, just to bash it. So... What are you getting value? Bang for buck. The iPhone SE, the 64 gigabyte version, if that is enough storage for you and you want the new iPhone, that 
I'm okay with. Anything else? Anything else? If you want to go up in storage, get a different iPhone used. Buy a used one. There's more value, more bang for buck. If you're not stuck in the ecosystem of Apple, Pixel 4a. $350, bucks, one of the best cameras in the game. Looks new. The screen just got the whole punch cut out. Great phone. Galaxy A71. Even older galaxies. The S10. The Note 9. 300, 350 bucks all day long. A lot of value in the Note 9. Still really great phone. The Note 10 from last year. Good phone. I can get that for 450, 500 all day long. Note 10 Plus a little more. But there are so many options out there. Competition is crazy in the mid-range market. And that's good for us as consumers. We're getting more value, more bang for buck. So keep that in mind. $1,000 phones, $1,200 phones, they're not necessary anymore. They're just not. We can get a lot of value between $350, obviously, because of the 4A, all the way up to six, seven hundred bucks. We can get crazy good phones right now. Is that really a term, crazy good phones? You guys know what I mean, but the iPhone SE after the hype, is it worth it? $400 price point, okay, I can see that. Anything else, it's not worth it. Anything else, there are better options for you, whether it's an iPhone or outside of the Apple ecosystem, tons of options. But that's it, guys, the iPhone SE after the hype. My final thoughts basically on the iPhone SE it is what it is. Good phone, outdated build, great internals, will be relevant for years to come. 400 bucks. Will they keep it around when the iPhone 12 comes out? That's another thing. Will it be around? Will they still sell it? And if they do, how much of a price drop are we going to get? So we'll have to keep that in mind. It might drop to 300 starting price point when the new iPhone 12 comes out. And at 300, that's a great deal. So keep that in mind. Better options in the used market, whether it's Android, Google, iOS, whatever it is. Tons and tons of options. But that's it, guys. Final thoughts after the hype, the iPhone SE. Again, slang cast here. These videos are going to be a little different than digital slang. It's just going to be me and you talking, chilling, hanging out, giving you my final thoughts on a product. Again, stay tuned every Friday night. Live streams here on slang cast. Every now and then, we will be doing competitions gaming competitions, right? We have two already scheduled. Madden this Friday night. Winner gets some headphones. Somebody in the chat, I will also be gifting with a pair of headphones. So stay tuned. Starts 9 p.m. Eastern. Slangcast here this Friday night. But that's it, guys. iPhone SE after the hype. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon. Peace.